In the mid-1980s, the Kawasaki Powerhouse program Team Green supported several very fast up-and-coming riders on the 1985 KX125. Eddie Warren, Ronnie Titchener, Donnie Schmidt, Rodney Barr, Tyson Boland, and so many other great riders throughout the years. The 1985 KX125 was a super fast bike and the bike to beat at the time. I managed to find one on Facebook Marketplace recently and I'm going through the whole bike to restore it completely. This bike looks in better condition than it actually is. The seller painted all the plastics and engine to touch it up some for sale. The plastic is all sun aged, the rims are being eaten away. A lot of work to do on this one. In this video, we'll rebuild the engine. Overall, it looks pretty solid. <laughs> Here you can see he sprayed the spark plug when he was touching up the engine paint. Spider is checking it out too. Right away I see the head studs are rusty, so the head gasket has probably been leaking for a while. When I drove the two hours to pick this bike up, one of the first things I did was see how the compression felt, and it felt excellent. Looking inside though, I can see the piston ring skirt is cracked off. That piece is either going to be in the bottom of the crank, or it flew out the exhaust. There is definitely rust inside the ports. I have no idea how long this bike has been sitting or when the last time it was running. I'm not always the most organized, but I always put parts in bags with the original bolts so nothing gets lost or confused. The cylinder is stuck on, probably just corrosion on the bolts, so I'll soak them and walk away from it for a while.
So yeah, after letting it soak for a while, the cylinder came right off. The piston is pretty scarred up, and both ring skirts are busted in the same place, but the rings aren't broken. Lateral movement feels tight on the rod, and there is no up and down movement, so that's good. The power valve moves smoothly. The old piston pin is stuck too, so I used a wheel puller to gently push it through. Here is a closer look at how the piston is busted. The water pump drain bolt is pretty rusty, but the impeller looks great. And fortunately, there isn't any corrosion in the magnesium case. You see that a lot on these older bikes. I soak the bolts with WD-40. And then put the flywheel back on with the key and use a strap wrench to hold the flywheel. And fortunately, with a little squeak, the impeller nut came off pretty easily. The water pump area looks great overall. Obviously, the pump seal will get replaced. Inside, everything looks clean and like it's been in oil, so that's a good thing.
The water pump bearing is pretty rusty, so the seal has likely been leaking and letting water in for a while. The clutch release bearing looks good. My shop was broken into recently and all of my tools were stolen, along with three bikes. I did get two of the bikes back, but none of my tools. So I've been buying specialty tools back as I need them. So I just measure this nut and go out and pick up a 24 millimeter socket. I'm working on a video documentary about the break-in. It's a pretty interesting story. I'll post it here when I'm done. Subscribe and you'll get a notice when it's up. For safety, I tried a strap wrench around the clutch, but it just wouldn't hold securely enough to break the clutch nut loose. So I carefully wedged a chisel in the gears and put the long wrench to it, and it came right off. This nut has been a bear to get off on some of the other bikes I've restored. I put the clutch back on temporarily to get the crank nut off. The crank nuts on this side are usually reverse thread or righty loosey, so I check this one with a magnifier and it looks like it is right to loosen. I can tell by the look of the oil here that some water has gotten in. All of the metal still looks in great shape though. To help split the cases, I screw two of the old bolts back into the case with big washers on them and use the wheel puller to gently pull the cases apart. Fortunately, this old wheel puller was not stolen in the break-in. It was laying on the floor under some shop rags. So, sometimes it pays not to be so organized. This old tool has been in my family for about 50 years. My stepdad used to use it to pull the flywheel off my mini bikes when I was a kid. I use screwdrivers to keep the cases even from front to back and keep slowly prying. What does all this stuff do anyways? Just kidding. <laughs> I know what some of it does. Before I pull the gear stacks out, I put zip ties around the ends. I don't have any reason to separate the gears, and I want to make sure all the shims, gears, and bushings stay in the exact order. No need to fight with it trying to put it all back together.
the gears all look in great shape. Tap all the bearings out. These are the new crankshaft bearings. This transmission bearing I was able to order from the 1985 Kawasaki parts list. For some reason this bearing is not listed on the parts list anymore. So I'm going to have to take this number 6204 and take some measurements and see if I can track a new one down through another bearing source. There are some of the other small bearings here for the power valve actuator and water pump. New piston pin bearing, new crank seals, and also all of the other seals I need for this motor. I managed to find number 6204 on eBay, so that's now on the way. I'm happy about that. These old main bearings were harder to get out than I was expecting. I cleaned the engine cases up and checked them for cracks and damage. This bike wasn't running when I bought it, so I have no idea what might be there, or not be there, or what the seller might have been hiding under fresh spray paint. The sprocket area has some damage from thrown chains over the years. There are so many more moving parts in motocross box from 1981 forward. The power valve arm. When I was putting this back together, first I wasn't sure if this piece goes like this or like this. Fortunately though, I can see the screw head marks, so obviously it goes like this. So, within just a few days, this new bearing that is no longer available from Kawasaki shows up in my mailbox. That's a beautiful thing. All of the pieces start going back in with the new bearings and new seals. the new crank seals. Unfortunately, on this bike, the cases have to be split to change the seals, so it would never be a small job if someone needed to just change the seals. Thank you. 
crank goes in the freezer for a while. Oh, there's that beer from last night. Glad it didn't bust. <laughs> the cases were carefully put back together. Nice new bolts. The crank moved smoothly. So now I'll start putting the shifter back together. I've already put the shift shaft back in. I'm using the pictures I took during disassembly to be sure all the pieces go back in the right places. And I'll slip the shifter on and run through the gears to be sure they are all there and working well. One down, that should be first. One half up is neutral. And there is neutral. Another full click up, there's second. There's third. There's fourth. There's fifth. There's sixth. <laughs> now we need to get on the brakes real hard to get into the first turn. Shim goes in the bottom, gear goes on like this, shim goes on the top, and the circlip goes on. The kickstart mechanism. I definitely need to look at my pictures here. There's a little hole right here the spring goes into. Like that. Spacer goes down. That. I put the kickstart on to test out the movement. Something's obviously not right. So I'll take this back apart and see what's going on here. It's so easy to lose a shim. None of this was taken apart, so I'm sure it's just an alignment thing. That's much better. I know from memory this tiny pin goes in here.
and that locks this tiny gear in. Lefty tidy on this one nut. New clutch plates came in. The old plates are all stuck together, unfortunately. I'm looking at these fiber plates, though, and these don't look very bad overall. Not worn. The fiber plates are seriously stuck to the aluminum plates, though. I'm going to have to clean all of these aluminum plates up and get them smooth again. Even the aluminum plates look new. There's not a lot of wear on them. looking at my trusty pictures from the teardown. These old clutch plates don't look very used and abused at all, so I put them in a plastic bag and labeled it, just in case sometime down the road somebody needs them or I need them for another project. I'm going to clean the top of this old piston and see if I can find any size markings on it. I don't see any marks on here, which tells me this is probably a stock factory piston. A standard piston for this bike is 56 millimeters. And this one is showing 55.48, so this is looking like a standard piston. 
I don't trust the accuracy of this tool for supercritical measurements. The cylinder is looking like 55.47, so I'm going to order a standard piston. I haven't cleaned the cylinder yet, so I can't tell what the real condition is. It's definitely not in pristine shape. The compression was great when I picked the bike up. That doesn't mean it won't seize, though. Something caused the top skirt of this piston to break off. I'm definitely going to have to check the intake boot for cracks. 35 years is a long time to be out in the weather. The reed cage looks nice and clean and solid, no chips. Yeah, I'll probably coat the outside of this car boot in black silicone. The inside rubber looks nice, though. After cleaning the cylinder up, it is actually looking worse, not better. The Nicosil liner or electrofusion seems to be chipping off. Here you can see it well at the top of the cylinder, like a coat of hard old paint that's chipping off. So this will need to be recoated. This may be why the piston busted up by the rings. Because I'm curious and want to explore all my options, I checked eBay to see if there were any cylinders available. I did find this one. It's a 1985 and has a steel sleeve put in it. The top half of the cylinder is coated in powdery rust though, which generally will clean right off. A problem with sleeve two-stroke cylinders though is the ports can get choked off. And I thought I might be seeing this in the picture showing the exhaust port. I'm a gambling man by nature though, so I bought it. I'm taking a chance, but I think I can clean it up and do some port cleaning with the Dremel. In the meantime, the final bearing for the water pump came in the mail. We all love getting new parts in the mail. So now I can put the side cover back on. The old water pump bearing is pretty rusty. It's obviously taken some water in at some point. It still spins, but is a little gravelly. I'm going to very gently pull this old bearing off with the wheel puller. The old bearing and the new one. The power valve actuator, a little flywheel that moves with centrifugal force as the engine revs.
The clutch arm gets a new rubber seal. New gasket kit. I like the look of these new bolts. Unfortunately though, when I tightened the case bolts down, a shifter bushing had slipped out of alignment and I cracked the clutch cover case. I wasn't happy with that at all. This bushing needed to be seated in the shift fork and somehow in my flipping the engine over and around, the bushing slipped out of place. And so now the shifter was sitting up too far about the width of a penny or a nickel. Here's the crack and the gap it created in the sealing surface. I know a lot of you guys are good with metal work and could easily repair this and smooth the surface flat. I'm not so skilled at manipulating metal, so I looked for a replacement. Fortunately, I was able to find one pretty cheaply, so when this comes in, I'll clean it up and have the problem fixed. Meanwhile, the cylinder I took a gamble on came in. Let's take a look at it and see if my gamble paid off or if I lost big. I can see right away the photos were pretty accurate. The top half of the cylinder has a dusty coating of rust on it. It should clean up and hone out nicely though. The next big question was, is this a standard size bore? That's important to me because, well, because after a few beers the other night, I went ahead and ordered a new standard piston online. Well, that worked out. Good. It's a standard 56 millimeter bore. And the same day, the new piston shows up. The bad karma I had with the clutch cover is obviously improving. Let's look at the new piston. So there's the new piston kit, new rings, clips, new piston pin, and I have the new pin bearing. I cleaned the sleeve cylinder up and I like what I see. Interesting, looks like an old copper squish ring. This cylinder does have a broken spring mount. So I'll drill a new one up here in the corner. Points weren't nearly as bad as I thought they might be on the sleeve cylinder, but I cleaned them up and made the transitions to the steel sleeve smoother where I could.
The power valve hardware all looks in great condition. If you've had to replace power valves in the older MX bikes, particularly in bikes like the 1989 RM250, you know how ridiculously expensive this stuff is getting. These pieces have to be matched up or timed when they go back in. The marks here need to line up with the dots on the valves. So they open when they should. This looks great. And the sleeve cylinder is actually looking amazing. The Nicosil plated cylinder will definitely be a faster cylinder. The ports are more clear and have better flow, and the Nicosil is a slicker surface for the rings to travel on. So I'll send that cylinder out and have it recoded and have it handy on standby for any vintage racing. Who knows? We all get wild hairs and want to hit the start gate again. Here's the new spring hole for the pipe. I like the look of these Wassner pistons. It's a German company with a manufacturing plant here in the U.S. I have a Wassner piston in my 1978 CR250. tab at the back tells me this head gasket is on the right direction. This gasket is so old school looking. Most newer two strokes basically just have two O-rings up there, right? The cover for the power valve chamber. Back in the 80s, a few hop-up companies like DMC made a spacer that would make this chamber larger, giving it more volume. I saw one for sale recently for $100. Today, the new used clutch cover came in the mail.
This looks good overall. So, another good purchase. I'm going to heat this old bearing, tap it out, and put the new one in. I cleaned this up, painted it, and it's ready to go on. This is looking much better. This one didn't pop when I tightened the bolts down. Lubing up one of the more critical parts, the water pump seal. And this is the final product. New bearings, new seals, new gaskets, new piston, rings, clutch plates, everything documented and confirmed to be in good shape. Ready to rev and ready to rip. I'll post a video of the first crank and the rest of the bike build soon. Just click subscribe and you'll get a notice when that new video is up. I can't wait to hear what this thing sounds like. Thanks for checking it out.